Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Assessing Writing. Here I'm going to be introducing you to the new teacher guides for the assessment of writing for A2 key for schools and B1 preliminary for schools. It's not about teaching you to assess writing, it's showing you the guides and how they can help you to assess writing. First of all, um, I think it'll be really helpful if I could check in with you to find out something about your classrooms and um, to find out more about how many of you are teaching learners who are number one at A2 in A2 level or it, but in a non-exam class or who are preparing for learners for A2 key for schools, because it'd be interesting to see how many are actually in exam classes. Ah, oh, now that's really interesting. Quite a, an even mix there. So some of you are at the level, but not um, preparing for A2 key for schools. Well, hopefully if you're not preparing learners for A2 key for schools, we're going to inspire you so that you're going to uh, uh, encourage learners to take the exam. Next question, poll number two. How many of you are teaching at B1 in non-exam classes? So this is the, the next poll, the next question. Um, preparing learners for B1 or in a non-exam class? So we've got a right old mixture there as well. OK, so it looks like we've got an even split between those of you who are in exam classes and those of you who are not and, a, and another mixture as well of other people teaching other levels. OK, that's really interesting. That gives me an idea of where you are as well. Now, let me change the slide and we'll move to the next next one. So next question um, is if we can just move the poll. The poll is closed, so let's get rid of that. OK, teacher to teacher. I now would like to uh, check in with you and your classrooms and I want you to really think, put your teacher's hat on and think about what you feel is the best thing about teaching and assessing writing. So lovely, individual feedback. Yes, it's one to one with the learner, isn't it? You can find where the learner's problems are. Lovely answer there. You can pick out where their mistakes are. Understanding where they are on their learning journey. You can see progress. And isn't that lovely to see progress of your learners in their writing? Peer evaluation. Rewarding. Yes. Lots and lots of ideas about progress. Creativity. Some fantastic ideas. I can see that a lot of you are enthusiastic teachers of writing. That's lovely to hear. I've got another question for you. Let me see if I can get my slides to move. What, no, question number two, are the challenges of teaching and assessing writing? So we've looked at the positives. What do you find challenging? Ah, it takes time. Oh, different. Yes, I agree. In co coherence. Students don't like it. Mm. Giving constructive feedback, patience, seeing mistakes, lack of time. I think time is one of those issues for so many teachers. We're so busy, aren't we? Engagement. Teaching learners to use rubric. Really interesting. Time management very demanding vocabulary, managing their interests, supporting weaker students. OK, well, let's that there's some lovely, lovely ideas there. And I'd love to take a closer look at those. Uh, but we don't have time. It's against us. Let's take a look at the next question. I want now to show you and give you an idea about what to expect from today's webinar. Now, today's webinar is to show you how the new guides are a fantastic resource for to support teachers, but to support you, support your learners. The new guides explore and pay attention to both teaching, to learning and to assessment. They are a fantastic training resource, 
guiding you to help you assess your learners' writing. And we provide you with practical teaching activities for you to try with your learners. And importantly, we also provide you with authentic examples of candidate writing, examiner grades, and examiner comments. And that's really helpful because you can see exactly what it is that you need to be looking at when you're working with your learners. And these examples, uh, uh, we give you complete scripts for you to assess and then compare. But let me take you through and I'll show you a little bit more. So without further ado, welcome to the new guides. So, new teacher guides designed to help you to teach and assess learners, learners' writings in preparation for their exams. We have one for A2 key for school, schools and B1 preliminary for schools. We also have them available for B2 first for schools and C1 advanced. And very shortly, we will also have one for C2 proficiency. Now, just to, to tell you, we will also have another webinar on Tuesday the 17th of November and Thursday the 19th of November for the higher level guides. So come along to that to find out more. So who are the new guides designed for? They're designed for you. They're designed with teaching tips and activities. They're designed to help you assess writing authentic examples of writing, grades and comments with practice activities to compare your assessment with the examiners. So why are these, these new guides such a valuable resource right now? Well, face-to-face -face professional development is not an option. We don't have this. We're working in school face to face with training is difficult but this is these are designed as a teacher development tool these are designed to be informative and easy to follow and understand but they're also designed to support you to support your learners with tips and useful teaching tips as well so let me show you through the design features. How are the new guides designed? Well, really interestingly, what we wanted to do was make the guides so that they were easy to work with on screen. So we implemented or added uh, navigational tools and hyperlinks. And these will take you where you want to go and take you back again. Let's take a look. If you look down here at the bottom of the page, you can move to the previous page, the next page, the first page, the previous view and back to the uh, contents page as well. So they're really easy to find your way around. You don't have time to be finding your way through. So we're here to help you with that. But with more than that, um, the guides are designed with hyperlinks within the activities. So taking, um, taking the pain out of the search, taking you directly where you want to go, taking you back again and saving you time. So you'll see an activity, you'll want to find out more about the activity, you'll follow the links, but then you want to go back to the activity and the procedures to find out what to do. You, the link will take you. So they're wonderfully designed, making them a really useful, workable tool. But in terms of design, we've done another thing. We've embedded these, as you can see here, key terminology in these orange information boxes, key terminology. These are the terms that you may have always wanted to know what they meant, but you never dared to ask. I remember when I was a learner teacher trying to make sense of all of the terms that everybody used, and I wasn't really sure. I didn't really know where to find out. But the guides 
provide these descriptors for you. And in this example, we've got an example for descriptors. What are descriptors? So we have not only a definition, but we've also got a diagram to illustrate how the descriptors um, work, how the descriptors work. And here we have an example to show you um, in the guide the progression between the levels. So here we have the descriptor for organisation. And you can see that for A2 key for schools, text is connected using basic high frequency link linking words, the progression through to B1 preliminary for schools, and then that progression through to B2 first for schools, where you can compare what you might expect a learner to be able to do uh, at A2 right the way through to B2 first for schools. So this is really helpful uh, for you in, if you're not sure quite what, what this means. And here are some uh, sample, uh, just some examples I've taken from the guides. We've got a uh, definition of the common European framework. We talk about the CEFR all the time, but sometimes we forget that perhaps not everybody understands what it is we're talking about. It's another language, isn't it? We've got a definition of key terminology for what we mean by self-assessment, what we mean by peer assessment, what we mean by formative assessment, a term we use a lot, but perhaps we're not completely sure if we had to define it, what it meant. Particularly useful if you're a learner teacher. But what about the pedagogy? What about the, the teaching and the assessment? So what do we mean by this? What have we done to help you here? Well, um, I'm going to start with you, actually. Before we look at what we can offer you in the guide, I wonder whether or not we can help one another. Teacher to teacher on the chat in the chat box. Have you got any tips that you can share with each other in the chat box about giving learners feedback, assessing learner writing and anything that you find works for you. So something that you may have that someone else in our webinar today will find helpful. Ready, steady, type. Ah, portfolios. Don't correct all the mistakes. Find something positive to say. Ah, interesting voice recordings. Meaning first, models. Love that, really helpful. Okay. Portfolios. So, in fact, a portfolio, this is coming up quite often. A portfolio, if you if you collect learners writing through the learning programme, they can then see where they were at the beginning and follow their progress through and see how they're improving on their mistakes. Proper feedback, constructive feedback are ah, interesting there. Drafting really useful and that's very helpful actually to practice at all levels but also as you go through the levels it becomes really important to do that. Encouraging them to practice. Groupings, that's an interesting one. In fact working collaboratively and writing collaboratively can be really helpful too. Conferencing, say searching on the internet, Ah, I can see someone's gone uh, technological there and offered suggested Padlet as an option. And yes, if we are all working from home, teaching online, perhaps exploring those tools is something that's very, very helpful. Model texts, yes, so they know what they're looking at and what they're working towards. Brainstorming, group work, collaborative work. Yep, I can see keeping a journal. Ah, that's something I used to do in class. So a little bit, 10 minutes writing every day to improve practice and confidence with writing. OK, I'm going to move on to the next uh, slide, but some amazing ideas there. So thank you for sharing those with us. So what can we uh, offer you in our 
in our guides. Well, we've got uh, in terms of feedback, there are different strategies that we've suggested. We've got lots of top tips all through the uh, through the through, through the guides. We have teacher assessment and top tips for teacher assessment. And here we have one which is I noticed actually somebody else has um, has posted about this in the in the in the chat. Hearing a teacher's voice can feel more supportive. Make a short video or voice recording with your comments. Have any of you ever tried this? Now, we're going to put a poll in here to see if we can um, put some ideas in there. So if we can launch the poll to see how many of you, have you ever tried giving learners feedback using recordings? Uh -huh. Well, that's interesting to see that some of you have, in fact, more than I expected, really. So that's really, really useful. Um, and any ideas that we've got on how you've approached that and the response, that would be really helpful. So most of you haven't, but nearly 40 of you, 40% 40, 40 of you have. OK, so that is really interesting. Now, let's move to the next slide and... I'll take a look at, okay, share results. I, I'm going to share the results with you to see if you can see that. So this is the final result. So a number of you have tried it, um, which is quite interesting to see. So let's um, move to the next slide. Hang on, my screen, okay, Let me end the poll. Okay, if you have uh, ever tried giving, have you ever tried? Let me just move that. So if you have given video or voice recording feedback, what would be really helpful for those of us who haven't tried it would be really uh, helpful to type your ideas into the chat box. How did it go? Aha, uh -huh. that's great. They listened. That is brilliant. They listened. They were interested. OK, that it was motivating. They noticed their mistakes. OK, it was brilliant. I'm getting some really. Would you recommend it? It sounds like you would. They generally have tips. Vocaroo. So that's helpful. That's a, an option for using it. OK, students enjoyed it. They asked for clarification. They worked on that. Now, this is really, really interesting to see because I can see that whilst most of you hadn't tried it, I think that's interesting to see that most of you who have tried it have found it very, very helpful. I'm going to move to the next slide. Now, thinking about that feedback, just thinking about it, it's not a poll this time. Now that you've seen that people have given their comments and their experience, would you try it if you've never given voice recording feedback? Wow, I'm seeing lots and lots of yeses there, lots of yeses. I think it would be useful for us to find ways of doing that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. All the yeses, all the yeses. That is amazing. So I can see that this is something that you'd like to try. And in fact, the teacher's guide gives you the ideas to try something new. Now, interestingly, I haven't mentioned this before, but this is a really helpful strategy for learners who have specific uh, or different learning difficulties, such as dyslexia, because it means that they can engage with their feedback without having to read their feedback. So let's move on. Another strategy, another tip is, and I noticed somebody else has typed this into the chat box. We recommend in the tips to respond to what learners write, not just how accurately they write. Now, this tip is linked explicitly to the content writing assessment subscale because what we want learners to do is to think about answering the question have they addressed the question they were asked 
and they get points for that. So we are interested in reading for meaning, reading for content. And I think it's understandable. We want their English to be correct, but sometimes learners can get lost in accuracy and forget about uh, what it is and the message that they're trying to deliver uh, in their writing. So this is really, really uh, key. I noticed that someone's posted that most students don't really answer to the content. Yes, and we need to help them to do so. So uh, this is where it's a good tip for you. And the writing process. Now, I noticed that in the conversation that we've had in the chat box, a lot of you have talked about process writing and the assessment isn't the end of the writing process. So it's important to encourage learners to plan, to write, to read, to check, then for you to evaluate it, to give them feedback and then for them to read draft. So to look back and correct. Now, interestingly, we help you to practice with this. So within the um, within the tips, we also give you links to activities. So we provide you with the tip, but we provide you with a teaching idea to help you try it. Let's take a look. So here, Look out not only for the uh, tips boxes, but also for the activities. When you see the, 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 the activity one, follow the link to the activity to try it. And that will help you to practice it. And here you can see when we provide you with uh, activities, um, we provide you with a very clear step by step uh, explanation as to how to do it. So the activity, we have aims. You know what you're doing and why you're doing it. You can see how the activity is going to help your learners. So for example, this one, the focus is accuracy to show the importance of feedback so that learners can read comments and understand and correct their mistakes. And this gives you strategies that you can try. So go ahead, give it a go next time you're in class. But, but I noticed that uh, no, a number of you have also talked about peer assessment. I've seen that going through in the chat. So here are just a few examples in our, ti uh, in, in our tips boxes. Provide learners with scaffolding to help them. When they're looking at a partner's piece of writing, provide them with a list of points for them to look at. They don't know where to start. They'll just look at spelling or they, they just won't know what to aim for. So provide them with a focus. Give them something to focus on and uh, evaluate um, or give them a model before you mark a piece of work. And then importantly, and I think at the moment, this is really, really key. Look at the bigger picture. Be kind to one another. Peer assessment is something that a lot of learners may not be used to. They may not feel comfortable with. So be kind to one another and encourage them to look at the bigger picture, the content, what the message is in the writing, and then to encourage them to focus on the content, on the on the little points. Learners often read and look at the mistakes and they forget about the content. Yes, I see that someone's just said it's a deductive method. Yes. But we don't only provide you with teacher assessment, peer assessment. We also provide you with uh, self-assessment and tips on self-assessment. Now, self-assessment is absolutely key because encouraging learners to uh, evaluate their work means that they're taking ownership. They are in charge of their learning. You're giving them responsibility for checking their work. So the first tip is to circle the error. Now, it's important to 
if you're going to introduce self-assessment, to do it as a regular part of your course. So circle the errors that they find themselves. Encourage them to find the mistakes for themselves first and then encourage them to look back and think about how they might correct that error. And of course, really helpful to provide the learners with the tools they need to direct their own learning. So for extra practice, we have write and improve. Now, you may have already seen this, but I can highly recommend it. Um, so write and improve, it's a free online tool and there's lots of different levels available and the learners type, they submit their answers and they will get feedback immediately. And that will help them to evaluate their work and make corrections. So let's think about why meaningful feedback is so helpful. Why does this support learning? So really, in fact, uh, can you type your ideas into the chat box? Why is it so helpful for learners to receive and give and evaluate? OK, so some learners don't want to go with self-assessment. I think I noticed someone has mentioned about self-assessment and some learners don't want to go with it. I think it's making it achievable. Small steps. Motivation. It helps with motivation. It consolidates learning, helps them improve, good for progress. Learn from their mistakes. Yes. They encourage one another. It makes them more interested, makes them more aware. Editing. OK, let's take a look at some of the ones that I came up with, although I think your ideas are just as good. You've mentioned this. Many of these are coming up in the chat box here. So meaningful feedback inspires confidence and motivation. It makes them see what they can do and what they need to work on to improve and continue to make progress. Really importantly, meaningful pro, uh, feedback promotes self-awareness. So learners know that there may be a regular mistake that they keep making that they need to, to get right. So perhaps there's one word that they keep spelling wrong incorrectly. By doing self-feedback, uh, then they'll notice, oh, I've got to remember, that's the word I always make a mistake on. It encourages learner autonomy. Now, this is really, um, really, really helpful because obviously we're talking about A2 key for schools and B1 preliminary for schools. But learner autonomy is about lifelong learning. And it starts at, at, as soon as our learners go into the classroom, whatever age they are. And we need to encourage them to become reflective learners and to take ownership of their learning and good feedback encourages that. And of course, meaningful feedback will improve learner performance because it will encourage that feeling of progression. And many of you mentioned the use of portfolios. It means that they can look at a piece of writing they did in week one, compare uh, their feedback that they're getting by week six, by week eight and later on, and they can see their progress. But what about the teaching activities? What do we offer you for teaching activities within our guides? Well, here we have a teaching activity that I've taken from the A2 Key for Schools guide. It's an example task. Now, the, assess, the assessment focus is the writing uh, process, generating ideas based on a prompt. You'll notice a connection to the picture prompt activity. The aim is of the activity is to practice creative thinking, to stimulate imagination with the learners, but importantly, to provide learners with a safe space to write where well, they aren't worried about mistakes and in this way we're going to encourage them to feel more confident about writing. I noticed that one or two of you have mentioned uh, that learners really don't want to write. They feel 
anxious about it. So, shall we try the activity? Let's go. Now, what you have to do, the activity recommends that you bring three pictures to class and you discuss uh, uh, the vocabulary and you elicit ideas and you make connections between your three pictures. So I have found some pictures. I've taken them off uh, this website called Unsplash, which means they're royalty free. So they're safe to use uh, without having to pay royalties. So the good recommendation there if you're searching for pictures. I want you to listen to my questions. So tell me what can you see in my picture? What can you see in my picture? What can you see? We can see a cat with its owner, a girl loving her cat. OK, so what color is the cat? A white cat. Is she a happy girl? Oh, it's a very cute cat. Girl. How old do you think our cat is? Our girl is, sorry. How old is the girl? The kite is oh, it's very white. Oh, she's about 14. Yes. OK, you think she might be seven. OK, she's pretty. She's young. She's what about the cat? Is it a young cat or an old cat? A young cat, a young cat. What do we call a young cat, a baby cat? What's the word for a baby cat? A kitten. Good. OK, so we have a kitten and we have a, a, a girl. What do you think is the name of the cat? What's the name of the cat? Lucy, Lucy the cat. Snow, oh, I quite like snowflake because snowflake is white and we're going in towards the winter now. What do you think is the little girl's name? The little girl's name. Alice, okay, so we have snowflake and we have Alice. Do you think our, that Snowflake is a good kitten or a naughty kitten? Is she a good kitten or a, na a naughty kitten? Oh, check some spelling there. I could see a little spelling mistake there, grumpy kitten. A naughty kitten, but a nice kitten. Okay, now we've elicited some vocabulary. We've got a little context for our story. Let's move on to the next picture. Aha. Uh -huh. So what do you, can you see in this picture? What can we see in this picture? We can see a tree. We can see a beautiful tree. What time of year is it? Is it the summer or the winter? Green grass, tree, it's the summer. It's a, is it a, a, a sunny day or is it the lushy green? Lush green tree, a big tree. It's a beautiful tree sunny day few clouds it's an english it looks like an english scene to me a sunny day in an english summer okay now so it's a beautiful sunny day and here we have our tree now i want to ask you the next question what do you think is the connection between lucy snowflake and our tree what's the connection What's the connection? The kitten was on the tree. Snowflake is in the tree. Snowflake, Lucy found Snowflake on a tree. They're all alive. They live in a country house. Okay. So Lucy found Snowflake under the tree. Okay. They like playing near the tree. Okay. So Snowflake and Lucy live in the country. And Snowflake was found under the tree, playing under the tree. A lovely tree. OK, we need to make the connection. Uh -huh. What do we see in this picture? What's this picture? What's the a fire fighter, a fire, a fire truck, a fire engine? Really interesting. So fire engine is in English, fire truck, American English, firefighter, or a fireman, we could say, or a rescue team. Now, why is the fire engine in our story? 
the kitten, the kit. Oh, that's a terrible story. There, the kit, the cat. Snowflake went up the tree. She got stuck. Luke, what does what does Lucy do? How does Lucy feel? The cat's in the tree. Lucy calls the firefighters. Save her cat. The cat has been saved. Oh, fantastic story. Together, online, we have created a story. So this is something, an activity you can do with your learners in class, with the pictures that you take in. Or this is something you can do online, just as I have, by finding pictures that you can make a connection with to practice writing. OK, let me move to the next slide. If it will go. OK, so in this activity, what did we do? We brought three pictures into class. We discussed vocabulary. We talked about ideas. We gave our beautiful kitten a name and our little girl a name. We created a narrative together and throughout the activity, we were writing words on the board or on a uh, on a on Padlet. You could do it on the screen and we co-constructed the narrative together. We could write the story on the board together, safe spaces to write. We can co-construct and co-write the story with the class. Now, this is step one. This is week one. Next week, new pictures, repeat the activity, but this time, the next time, what would you do the next week? Would you do it slightly differently? Create a new picture, draw it yourself. Yes, you could. Okay, what would you do next week? Make connections, yep. Keywords, yes, rewrite the story. Okay. Operate a bit. Ah, interesting, a video. Okay. Use connectors. You could introduce new words to make sure that you've got the connections between the words. Lovely. Allow the narrative to become more complex. Ah, group writing. Very, very nice. OK, so the next week, what you could do is take away some of the scaffolding. You could uh, encourage the learners to come to the board to write or they write in groups and then share with another group each other's stories. So you take away a little bit of the support or you can continue with another picture. Yes, lovely idea. So we've put what well, you've been answering this question. You created a chain story. So well done. We've actually just answered this question on the pre on, on this slide here. So re revisit today's story using past tenses. Ah, that's interesting. You could introduce different grammar grammar in there. OK, you could pass the paper around. Mm. Now, interestingly, we need to be really aware as to how we deliver this uh, uh, teaching activity in the classroom in terms of handling pieces of paper. So, um, in fact, we need to be super careful with that. So perhaps not passing pieces of paper. OK. So let's take a look at the way in which this uh, picture prompt writing activity helps. You'll notice that a lot of the activity was around eliciting vocabulary, finding out what learners know and how they can think creatively, speaking for fluency and using their imaginations to speak for fluency. So thinking of ideas about a, a picture that they find attractive, that they're going to want to talk about. Who doesn't like a picture of a pretty white kitten? You're activating ideas. I notice critical thinking with pictures and ideas. You're activating critical thinking and creativity, but all the time using language. But notice, we haven't written anything yet, but what we are doing is we are creating a safe space for learners to write. So by the time we get to the point where they start to put pen to paper, 
they're not anxious. They know what to say. The language they've given you, they have found for themselves. And it's made them feel happy to write. And so they're now ready to write in response to picture prompts. Now, what's also interesting is that they're also learning from one another because you will have seen with me asking you questions that one idea from one learner is a piece of vocabulary is maybe a piece of vocabulary that another learner didn't know. So they're learning from each other as well. So it's all about peer support, class support, creating safe spaces to write. Let me move my slide. Okay, so all of the activities you'll find in the guide, uh, there are also options for adaptation. So it may be that you want to uh, change the activity slightly. So each activity comes with uh, a way in which you can adapt the, the activity for your learners. So there's plenty of really rich teaching ideas for you, all of them linked to writing. And notice you can see here, this is the real exam tasks. So by the end of the uh, learning program, by the time they're about to take their exam, they're ready. They know exactly what they have to do because they've practiced it in class with you. Activate, interact, develop some lovely ideas coming through there. Now, how to assess learners writing. This is about supporting you to support your learners. So what about assessment of their writing? As I said at the beginning of this webinar, I'm not going to focus in this session on how we assess writing. I'm going to show you how the writing guide can guide you towards assessing your learners writing. And we've given you some resources to help you. So we provide you in the guide step-by-step -step teacher training to help you assess your writing. So here we go, this is B1 preliminary for schools and you're thinking here are the assessment criteria, I need help understanding assessment criteria, understanding how I can grade my learners writing. So I here you see the assessment criteria. Here we have the grade boundaries, all very helpful information, but what does it all mean? We're here to help you with that. The guide is designed to help you. Let me show you how. Oops. Okay, we provide you with a super simple checklist to help you to understand what the examiner is looking for. So you can see here simple questions, uh, uh, right and wrong, what the examiner is looking for, for content, for communicative achievement, for organisation, for language. So for content, what we want to see is that the candidate or the learner has answered the question. Have they done what they were asked to do? So what we're not looking for is that the candidate didn't answer the complete question, that they didn't answer what they were asked to. We want our learners to write and answer the question. Communicative achievement. This is one that I think a lot of people find quite challenging, but here there is a simple exclamation, just a little checklist for you to help you. And I think the one that I like uh, as well is the organisation, the writing is well put together, um, the language, there's a good range of vocabulary and grammar and it's used accurately. Really, really helpful this because the little activity we just did, we're pulling out lots of vocabulary, giving learners confidence to use the language they know. Let me change the slide. So content, communicative achievement, organisation and language. There we go. So here we have uh, a step by step 
uh, teacher training to help you assess. I need understanding on how to score my learners. So what do we have to help you here? So you will see this in all of the handbooks. But in fact, what does it all mean? So keywords are highlighted. And with the keywords, there's a little quick uh, description of what it means. What, so what does this mean? Explanation, uh, explanation. And this is really helpful for you, particularly if maybe you're not teaching exam classes, but you're not exactly sure what it is you need to focus on. It's going to help you to know how to assess your learner's performance. But what does it mean in practice? So we I mentioned right at the beginning of the uh, of the webinar that we provide you with step-by-step uh, -step training with authentic candidate uh, writing, examiner comments and grades. Now we go through this for each of the um, uh, the, this, the, the, the assessment criteria. So this is uh, an example where we focus on assessing language. Notice examples are given for each of the criteria. Now, we not only provide you with examples of very strong students, but we provide you in the guide with examples of mid-range and weaker performance. So that means that you know what a strong performing student looks like and you know what a weaker performing student looks like. And it will give you an idea to help you gauge your learner's performance and whether they're strong candidates or weaker candidates. Notice the text is highlighted. So you can see we've highlighted the text here and we've highlighted the examiner comments within the candidate writing as well. So you'll notice that the examiner has uh, uh, scored band three for this particular uh, candidate. And uh, the comment is used basic vocabulary related to the context. If you look at the candidate writing, that's highlighted in yellow. So you can see, what do we mean? What is basic uh, examiner, uh, basic uh, vocabulary? If you look at the green, errors occur with punctuations uh, and articles. If you notice, that's highlighted in green in different colors. And that is really helpful. So you know what to look for. And this is all in the guide. And of course, in the end, it's all about training, teaching and training. And we provide you with the opportunity to practice. So we provide you with authentic sample uh, answers from authentic uh, students. I just want to reassure you that all of the uh, candidate writing, the names have been taken out. Everything has been anonymized. No candidate can be identified from the scripts that we've chosen. We've been really, really careful to make sure that scripts are anonymized. So we provide you with six examples from real preliminary for, can, uh, for schools uh, candidates. And we provide you with a blank photocopyable template, which has a hyperlink. And if you go to the page 25, it'll show you where to find it. So you can practice that, uh, the training. And of course, we have to provide you with a top tip. There's a reminder, just like students, please don't cheat. Why not evaluate the learner writing and then check the examiner comments afterwards? Now, as if this wasn't enough, there's more. Don't forget the extra resources that we have available on the back page of the um, guide. We've got tools to help you. You can see here, I mentioned the teacher assessment uh, template. So this is really, really helpful for you. So this will give you the tools so you can practice assessing and use this for your own learners. And hyperlinks are provided. 
but also there are extra uh, there are extra resources with hyperlinks to lesson plans on the back page teacher resources on the back page links to the webinar recordings write and improve pen friends and cup research papers now i noticed one or two of you were asking where can i find these guides i saved this till last so that you would stay with me and not jump straight in and take a look let's take a look i'll show you now so here we go locating your new guides they're on the new web part of the website here is the link to the website you'll see in the your new english classroom website we've got one two three four five different levels the one you want to go to is understanding learners levels let me just when you go into this part of the page uh, of the website you'll see uh, a really interesting blog on understanding levels but scroll down the page and you'll find this picture here this lovely little girl writing on the board guide to assessing writing and all of the guides are there. So what have we looked at this morning? I've shown you that we've got new teacher guides for the assessment of writing. They are designed with teachers in mind, with attention to both teaching, learning and assessment. They're designed not only with teaching ideas and information about assessment, but they're designed as a training resource for you to help you assess your, learn your learners. And as we saw in our session today, there are practical teaching activities connected to the exam tasks for you to try in your classroom or if you're teaching online, in an online environment, just as we did today. And really helpful, some authentic examples of candidate writing with examiner grades and comments and real examples of candidate writing for you to assess at different levels. So that is everything from me. And I don't know quite what the time is. Let me check the time. OK, five minutes. We've got a moment to spare and let's see if we've got any questions in the Q&A and I shall take a look. OK. Now, do. Is it possible? Let me see. So how can we how can we improve student writing? That is a brilliant question. We've got very short time, but I'm going to focus on this one because students improve their writing with confidence. They improve their writing with practice and taking 10 minutes every day, if you can, to practice writing, just to build confidence, to make it feel achievable and to give them feedback, just to practice writing fluently. So practice, as they say, makes perfect. Um, let me see. Does spoken feedback work better than written feedback? I, I Now, I cannot say what the research says, but I think that's a very, very interesting uh, question. But I do think that spoken feedback, if it's given in a way that you know is meaningful, is really helpful, as is written feedback. What I think is most important is to really think about meaningful feedback, whether you give feedback written or spoken, make it meaningful, make it make sense so it helps the learner. A soft copy of the teacher's guide. Well, you can go into the uh, website, take a look, and they are available. And I think you can download them as PDFs. But of course, the problem with getting a soft copy is that you can't, uh, 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 you can get them online. Uh, but if you get, if you were to print them off, there's a lot of printing. Um, and also, you wouldn't get the links. Ah, that's nice. Okay. Now, really interesting, is there a newly designed guide to assessing speaking? Now, this is something that I personally really want us to explore and deliver and create. And we've got lots of ideas in the pipeline. 
the problem we have is the coronavirus and so getting access to um to to, to learners who are doing uh speaking live is really difficult and we want to be able to provide you with videos of learners speaking just as we provide you with authentic examples of students writing in the writing guides and at the moment the speaking guides are very difficult to uh, create but in the future fingers crossed okay so which is better in your opinion peer or self-assessment well I think that both are important um, I think number one um, self-assessment is incredibly important to help your learners become more self-aware of their strengths and weaknesses and what they need to work on. Peer assessment, I think it's uh, important to be able to give good feedback and for learners to support one another, particularly at the moment while we're all working in these difficult times. And so I think they're both important, um, but treat them differently. They are different. So I'm just trying to see if there's any more questions that I've missed. I'm checking the time there. Um, let's see. And if I can, if I can say one more thing, and then that will be it for me. And I have to say thank you. And thank you for your contributions. Um, encourage writing. Encourage and motivate learners to write because this is where communication is where it's at and at the moment communication through the written word as we can see here is really helpful okay and that is everything for today so thank you let me just change my screen hang on thank you very much and thank you for joining me this morning <laughs> lovely comments by the way 